8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. German planes again raided the British naval base at Scapa Flow this evening. The Germans say several ships were hit, one set afire, and another left listing badly. The British say no warship was hit or damaged. No use trying to guess which of these stories is nearer the truth, but the purpose of the attack is evident. Speeches in the British Parliament today forecast that Allied warships would be likely to enter Norwegian territorial waters in the future, as they have already done in the Alkmark case, to try to cut off German ships bringing iron ore home from Norwich. And if the Germans could seriously weaken the fleet at Scapa Flow, their own naval forces might hope to try to defend this route. Prime Minister Chamberlain said in the House of Commons that Britain would do everything possible to try to stop this traffic. And Lord Crewe in the House of Lords indicated that the three-mile limit was not likely to be respected if inconvenient. Mr. Chamberlain further said that the Allies would take suitable measures to keep supplies from reaching Germany by land. These suitable measures meaning the purchase of the export surpluses of new neutral countries. For instance, the Allies have already bought the whole Norwegian export supply of whale oil. Further, Mr. Chamberlain said, goods from the whole British Empire would be refused to neutrals unless they would agree to limit their trade with Germany, and the Allies would no longer tolerate what he called the double standard of neutrality created by German practices. This seems likely to go the way of other double standards. All of which is taken as meaning that the war will continue for some time to be chiefly a matter of economic attrition. Once more today, there was heavy artillery fire on the Western Front and a series of air actions about the results of which the stories of the two sides are as usual contradictory. But it doesn't seem to be expected that anybody is preparing for a serious attack. But the intensification of the blockade, whatever it may do to Germany, again puts the small neutrals on the spot. Especially the Norwegians, whose parliament met in secret session today to see what could be done about it. Norwegian papers protest against the tightening of the blockade, but it seems unlikely that this will have much effect. An official protest has gone from the Danish government to the British over the recent torpedoing of the German ship Edmund Hugo Stennis, which the Danes say occurred within the three-mile limit. And at the same time, the Dutch government protested to the Germans against air attacks on Dutch fishing boats and asked for punishment of the aviators. But in the present mood of both belligerents, it looks as if the neutrals will be increasingly squeezed between the two. A Nazi spokesman said tonight that Germany would retaliate with countermeasures for any intensification of blockade practices. German shipping companies announced today that they would start service from Danzig to ice-free ports in southeastern Sweden, from which they can get shipments of ore from the southern Swedish mines. These mines are less important than those in the north, but in a few weeks more, ore from the north can be shipped too, through the safe waters of the Gulf of Bothnia and the Baltic. There was no indication of reconstruction of the British cabinet at today's meeting of Parliament. But French politics suddenly flared up when the Radical Socialist Party held a caucus and decided to send a deputation to the former Premier Daladier, now Minister of War in the Reno cabinet, to ask him if he would like to head the government again. This is said to be largely the work of Mr. Georges Bonnet, once a well-known appeaser, who was dropped from his post as Minister of Justice in the Daladier cabinet when Reno came in. Former Premier Laval is also said to be working to upset Reno, hoping to be able to put over the conciliatory policy toward Italy, with which he has long been identified. Though Reno has lately been reported as trying to conciliate Italy, too. The Reno cabinet is believed to be safe till the debate on foreign affairs begins next week, and of course a no from Deladier would squelch the whole movement. Secretary Hall today refused the request of Representative Hamilton Fish that Ambassador Bullitt, who is to fly back to Paris tomorrow, stay here two weeks more to testify before a committee, which Mr. Fish wants Congress to appoint, to investigate the allegations of the German White Book. Mr. Hall said the Executive Department has accepted Mr. Bullitt's denials of the German story and that he is needed at his post. Neither the Fish resolution nor a somewhat similar one introduced in the Senate by Mr. Reynolds of North Carolina is expected to get very far with the committees to which it's been referred. Admiral Yonai, the Prime Minister of Japan, told reporters that he still hopes Chiang Kai-shek and his colleagues in the Chinese government will abandon their anti-Japanese program and cooperate with the new government set up by the Japanese under Wang Qingwei. The Wang government said Admiral Yonai needs the cooperation of all groups to build a greater Chinese state, but he admitted that he didn't really expect Chiang Kai-shek to come over. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 